got two acne rods out of uh, those crappy boat trailer jacks that always fail. I think I'm going to use this one. It has a finer thread and it's a left handed thread for some reason, but I have the nut that came with it. So I'm going to affix the nut to what? I'm gonna fix the nut to the bottom of this and then I'll put some sort of stop up here with a handle so we can pull this back and forth. Well, that was easy. I had this little scrap piece of U-shaped steel and just welded it to the bottom of the carriage and welded the nut. So one end of it's done. The other end will be a little more complicated. Okay, so preliminary setup. Pretty good. Pretty smooth. I've got a little too much play right here. I'd be able to get that out when I have a lathe. Um, but it works and it's strong. I'm not going to go much further with it right now because it's subject to get redone when I get all the other parts on here. So about 16 hours later, it's getting redone. It was uh, kind of Yankee. I want something a little better. And I found a bit that drills the right size hole for the shaft. Okay, it's version two. A lot more refined than the first version. A little tight, but that's okay. It'll, it'll wear in. So, no play. Or at least not obvious play. And then I put, I put these set screws, four on each side, and they go under the center point of the round bar. So they keep the um, carriage from lifting up. And it, they work well. I know, I know they'll wear, but one, I'm freaking 70 years old, so it's not gonna wear out in my lifetime. And two, they're adjustable, so you can keep that tightening them up. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this so far. And I got a hand wheel. I just need to drill it and figure out how to attach it here where the vice grips go are now. So I drilled and tapped a couple of quarter by 20s and one of them fits right in the original hole that was drilled in the shaft. So uh, this is good. The spacers are a little out of round, but if I had a lathe, shoot. I want to put a gear reducer on the main carriage travel and I have these gears which work perfectly well. This is a reversing gear. I won't need that. But it doesn't have a case for it and I would have to make like a guide to hold these shafts which is not my strong point. And I have this one which is already made up on a motor so I'm going to pull it off the motor and see what the end looks like that I can't see. And the advantage of this one is it's all made up in a case already, so it'd just be a bolt-on. So let's open it up, and uh, hopefully we can use this. They're both 10 to one, um, so the gear ratio is, it doesn't make any difference. So the gear reducer came off easy. I think it's gonna work fine. Um, I was hoping it would be a worm drive, but it's not. It's a spur gear in there, which means you can turn it from either side, so it's not self-locking. But that's a plastic reducer right there. Kind of strange. So. I got a bolt that fits, fits in here. I'm gonna have to cut the keyway. It's a teeny little keyway, but I have to cut and we'll put a key in there so it, it can, uh, so it can work. We'll put a handle on this end. I have a piece of the 5 8 plate that I'm going to cut a support for the little gearbox and uh, see if I can't make this work. I know I can make the gearbox work. I'm just not sure how to mount it yet. I'm going to give it a shot right here. So it came out a little bit egg shape, but not too bad. This will fit on here. My current plan. And if I get these two bolt holes parallel with the side, that should put this shaft vertical. And if this top is at 90 degrees to the, to the uh, sides, when I weld this under the carriage, this should still be vertical. I want it to be vertical so we can ride on or whatever I end up using. I think I'm gonna use a chain, but uh, time will tell. But anyway, I need to drill and tap my four mounting bolt holes that this thing came with. Um, shouldn't be hard. So I've got the first two bolts in and it's awesome, no problem. Um, I'd like to get two more. And this is the kind of thing that's hard for me. If I try to use one of the other holes, can't get the marker vertical 
and I know there should be a way where I can mark this thing and make it work but that's hard for me I always get them crooked so I'm gonna turn it over I'm drill new holes from the back and drill all the way through with the number seven that's the uh, size for putting the threads in and then I'll take this off and drill this quarter and tap it and then I'll be able to put two more nuts and then it'll be strong as a bull all right, that worked awesome. I have four bolts holding the gear reducer to the plate. Um, and everything's lovely. And I have this bolt that I cut. It's actually a head bolt from my engine. And I've got a groove cut for the key. And it fits in here without a problem. And I can put the hand wheel on here, but I don't have currently anything that will keep it from just falling out. So I need to uh, I need to work on that. I need to put something to keep it from just coming out. All right, I got lucky. I have a shiv that fits the bolt. So I'm using a set screw to hold it. And I put a washer, and then I put my key, and then this fits in the shaft. And the washer keeps it from going too far in. I just need to get something to keep it from coming too far out. Okay, so for now I got these two little this little thing welded on top with a washer under it and the pulley under that and another washer. And I promise I'm gonna do something a little nicer if it turns out that this works and I keep it in this configuration. But uh right now it's still kinda iffy, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time until I get it put together. So I was able to use one of my angles from my botched uh top thing, whatever you call it. And I got it tacked on there, and I'm always conscious of um, putting wells where I can cut them off easily, since this is this is designing in three dimensional with wells instead of on paper. And I got a hand wheel on there. It's not doesn't have a keyway. It's just relying on the friction of the two nuts. So I'll have to do something better eventually. But for now, it's good enough. Of course, on the knobs, pretty cute, huh? I hope it spins this easy after I get it all hooked up and it's trying to drag, drag the, uh, all that weight back and forth. It's going to be heavy. This is really heavy and the top is really heavy and there's going to be a top top. It's going to be heavy, heavy, heavy. So hope it'll be strong enough. I, I'm not worried about this. I just mean... Uh... So to tap a quarter by 20 uh, thread, you need to drill a number seven drill bit. And this is my number seven drill bit. It's the only one I've owned since I've been at the foundry. It's been sharpened so many times it's getting kind of short. But the problem I'm having with it is it's slipped in so many drill chucks, so many different drills, so many different times that the opposite end from the point is becoming tapered. It's just worn away. So it's becoming harder and harder to lock it into place. And tapping is uh, Never a problem if you go really slow and take your time because the taps are really hard and they snap really easy and when you snap one in a hole it's no fun because they're kind of tricky to get out if you can even get them out. So while I had um, this carriage upside down on the bench I went ahead and drilled and tapped two uh, holes for two bolts to hold the bracket that holds the outboard end of the lead screw and put two bolts in there and then I welded the angle up permanently. It was tacked before. Now I didn't cut the little um, wells that are holding this angle because I don't need to cut them, but if I ever need to remove it, it's just a matter of cutting these little welds and the two bolts will let me put it back together and line everything up. So about 16 of these bolts, they're uh, grade eight, I think they're hard. Um, so that put me in my first expenditure of about $13 hardware store prices and now this is coming to mail so this is another $21.90 so I'm into the same big money now I can't turn back this is gonna take a special um, shear pin it's skinny on the sprocket side it's fatter on the shaft side so we'll have to operate on this little bugger so a little tricky to hold that little bitty thing in the vise while I grinded that corner out, but I got it. Um, the sprocket is a little loose on the shaft, so when I tighten it up, it's not quite centered. I, I mean, we're talking thousands, but it's not right. I don't know if that's going to come back to haunt me or not. So I got us a rack kind of tacked together here. 
or actually it may be completely welded if it works. Let's undo it and flip it out. And we have a chain and we have a holder. I, I wanted to put a square in the bottom too, but it was gonna hit the uh, sprocket. So I just put this little round bar. Let's see if I can clamp it up there in some kind of way and see if it's gonna work. Okay, I think this is gonna work. Uh, obviously I gotta get the chain tighter. I got it tacked on both ends, but I'm gonna have to cut it loose and pull it with something and get it real tight. Maybe even weld it in spots in the middle. And I think I'm going to, you know, it's got that angle iron. I think I'll weld the angle iron a little bit, enough, turn the whole thing over and drill it and bolt it with oversized holes. And that way I'll be able to have some adjustment um, right now, I just have a clamp on each end, and it seems to do okay. But I think if I put a bolt about every six, eight inches, ooh, that's a lot of drilling and tapping in that three-quarter metal. But starting to get some serious weight on this thing. I'm going to take all this, all this extra stuff off, so I can flop it over and then flop it upside down, and uh, attach that angle, and figure out what I'm going to do to pull the chain and keep it tight. So now that I know everything works, it's time to finish welding out this angle, top and bottom, and then clean up that weld and put this to the side, kind of done with this part. Okay, rigging 101. If you put a strap around something and put it this way and pull to try to rotate, it's just gonna slip like this. But if you do it the other way, if you put this end through here, so you have like a right angle right here it chokes it will not slip through and you will be able to roll even round pipes and things you can grab like that it's gonna make a lot of noise Drill through the angle and into the base plate just a little bit to mark them. Now I feel like I can cut my wells, and get this angle out the way. I'll drill the holes in the angle a little bit bigger and then I'll drill and tap all the holes in the three quarter inch base plate, which would be fun with my little new electric battery powered no cord drill. We'll put it through its paces. Luckily I have a portable drill press it's going to take a lot of the grunt work out of drilling all these holes. Put the oil. And push down smartly. That's it. I'll have to move the base to catch the next two holes. That's just a matter of right about. Okay, we got all the holes drilled, but before I start tapping, I'm going to go in the morning and buy a fresh tap. This one's pretty old and it's been kind of hard to turn, and I really don't want it to snap off in one of these holes. So I'm done for the day. I'm pretty happy with my chain drive. Uh, cross sled what's, what's it called pretty happy with my chain drive uh, carriage mover I do need to tighten the chain and I'll, I'll do that when I put it back on so I've got my little chain rack back on got all the holes drilled and tapped I broke one bolt off of course so I had to drill the bolt out but I got it 
I have this little chain tensioning device and this is temporary because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up closing these um, openings here and it's gonna be in the way. But I didn't have here to shop a um, <clears throat> eye bolt small enough to go into the chain. So I just did this for now. When I get the right eye bolt, I'll redo it. And while I have the thing upside down, and I don't know if I'll ever use these holes, I'm gonna go ahead and drill four holes in case this ends up getting table mounted. I got my magnetic drill up there and it's currently working. And so just turn on the magnet and it'll hold itself and we'll drill a hole. Okay, we're into plan number three. Um, this came with my drill press. And I use it all the time, but only as a vice. I never use it as a locating device. It's cast iron, so I can't weld on it, but I could bolt it. So, having been frustrated with all my other ideas, I think I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna cut this off right here, and I will bolt a steel plate on top, I'll bolt a steel plate on the bottom. And then this part is not bad. It's got um, it's got ground ways and they're adjustable. I think it'll be beefy enough if I bolt it down. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna ruin it, hope it works. If it doesn't, I never used it except as a vice. I can probably still use that top part as a vice. Let's see. Well, I didn't catch it on film, but when I finally cut through it, this fell apart, which is what I was scared of, and it's cast iron, so that's why I had it tied to the rope. So, good stuff. Need to flip it over and finish cutting the other side. Okay, we have the makings of a fine slide. Um, no play, because it has these adjustable ways where they, you tighten it up as it gets worn, and it's not worn. Um, it's got an Acme threaded rod to feed it back and forth if it was wood i'd bring it home and run it through my surface planer but uh that ain't gonna work so i'm gonna have to rig up something to plane this top flat so i can bolt it to steel the bottom i also need to bolt to steel um this is a big step forward a big step this this is gonna be good so i'm bolting the slide down to the top of my little lathe and with four quarter inch bolts now why i have it slid so far to the right i don't know it caused me problems because i couldn't back up enough later on when i was grinding it but but i got it um so i'm using my little portable drill press again this clip here is two uh quarter inch holes through the three quarter inch thick top of this beam and this is real time and you can see how well drills do if you can just push on them hard enough. Now, if they're on the floor and you can get your body on top of them, you don't need this. But anything up high, it's really hard to push hard enough. Drill bits like a lot of pressure. They like a constant chip coming out. They dissipate their heat through the chip. And if you let the bit spin without a chip coming out, the heat builds up and your bit is toast usually. So uh, 
you can't really push too hard except on maybe little bitty bitty twist bits sometimes they'll break if you push too hard but most of them they like a lot of pressure um, and the holes go fast and everybody's happy the bits stay sharp for a long period of time Got this fastened down. I'm gonna rough grind it by hand, and then somehow we gotta make a jig to get a good uh, surface parallel with the bottom. That's my goal. This is my wonky but successful um, solution to getting the top of this cast iron um, structure parallel with the bottom. So the the guide is the guide is bolted down, and the wing nut is tight so it can't um, slide around. Now I have the grinder um, banded to the inside of a little piece of channel I found. It fits well. The channel is welded to the corner of the carriage. Um, and that acts like a hinge because it doesn't need to move but, you know, a scutch. And the other end of the channel has a threaded rod or a bolt that keeps, it, keeps tension on the grinder. So luckily this is cast iron and it cuts real easy. So um, I'm holding the camera and I'm operating the wheels with one hand, which makes it kind of funky. But when I had two hands, I could go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And when I got all of it grinded to a certain depth, I would go um, adjust the bolts, put a little more pressure down and do it again. And by the time I did it the third, no, the fourth time, it was uh, all the surface had been cut. So called it good after that. And it wasn't really smooth, but it was all at the same elevation. Um, there was too much play in my little contraption here. The grinder wanted to bounce around a little bit, so I couldn't get a perfect cut. But I did get a good flat cut, and just with a little little sanding with a flapper disc and a long, uh, strong file to check. I got a good flat surface on the top, and we can move forward. two passes on this uh, old rough cast iron and you can tell where the where the vertical was where I cut it off it was the cast iron had, had some shrinkage in there that won't affect anything so probably two more passes and then I'll just uh, probably I don't know what I'll do after that but it'll be flat it just won't it won't be smooth it'll be parallel the top will be parallel with the bottom. It just won't be smooth yet. We'll have to get it a little smoother than that so I can clamp a, a heavy steel plate on top. So my grind -o matic is a little too limber to get a perfect finish. It kind of has some flex in it, but I got a good flat finish. And then I hit it with the file, and it showed that the high spots are pretty random. I don't have like one corner high or anything. So I'm calling this successful. I can unbolt it from here um, and find a plate to put under it and over it and then I still have the problem of accessing the swivel bolt. I might put it all the way on the outside. Not sure. I drug in a little piece of that um, I-beam or the wide flange beam, whatever you want to call it, from outside and I'm cutting off the flange to use underneath the cast iron uh, part and I'm trying to cut as close to the flange so I don't have so much to grind, but I ended up with a pretty good grinding job because you can't really cut this perfectly. But I got it cut off, I ground it, it's flat, well I ground it all the way down, it was a lot of grinding, and then I attached it to the bottom of the cast iron. Rounded the corners and it drilled and attached it to the bottom of the cast iron. Look at that plasma cut. That's the best one yet. Maybe I am getting better. So the flange I cut off the beam this morning is on the bottom of the cast iron and I drilled and tapped 
uh, six, seven, eight, nine holes to pull it down. These were already in the cast iron, and this one on the end was already in the cast iron. They didn't have anything down here, so I drilled through the cast iron and I chamfered it. But my chamfer bit doesn't quite match the bolt head, so I got to I got to get them down a little lower so um, so the slide can go over them. So now I'm going to mount this piece of steel on the top. I'll have to take it apart and drill through the cast iron and drill and tap this. And on top of this will be welded the tool post. And then I have to figure out how to pivot this piece of steel up there and have the ability to tighten it up. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that yet, but I'm feeling good that this is coming together. So I'm going to take the top half of this cast iron off, flip it over, drill and tap, and then this will be ready to weld the tool post on. So little progress here. So I drilled seven holes in here. Um, Cast iron's kind of thin. I wanted to spread the load out a little bit. It's going to be a lot of drilling and tapping. Drilling's easy. T tapping is by hand. So I'm going to go to the drill press, and I can drill them in the drill press, and that way they'll be straighter than if I drill them by hand. Okay, today, the stars and the moon are cooperating. I got seven bolts holding the cast iron to the steel. Um, these two, I got some Yankee ones here. I want to replace them. That's a flathead and they need to be a smaller flathead so that the carriage can slide over the top of it. So that's pretty much done. Um, seven holes up here. The hex head bolts work great for uh, five of them. These two, I'm going to have to get a um, Allen head bolt because there's not room to get in there with a wrench. So quarter by 20 Allen head, I might even have some at home. And I got a plan. Um, if I replace this baby with an Allen head cap screw, I think I can get it in there and by sliding this all the way to the front, loosen it and unloosen it with an Allen wrench and then slide the carriage back in the usable position and I think that can be my pivot for this thing to rotate. Um, it's about in the right spot. I think I think this is going to work pretty good. I don't know where I'm going to get an Allen head three-quarter cap screw. Probably a uh, McMaster car for ten bucks, but that's okay. Um, this is kind of a turning point. I guess a good good spot to end this video. I now have the um, you know everything moves. I have the carriage it slides back and forth it works well i'm going to need some kind of lock to lock it into place i have the cross slide which slides back and forth and it's all copacetic and i have the i don't know what this is called but it's the one that pivots i've got the bolt that it pivots on um i have an allen head bolt ordered should be here tomorrow because i can't turn that bolt um can't get a wrench in there or whatever, but an Allen head bolt, I can come in straight with an Allen wrench and then pull the track back. So this stuff's all good. I'm ready. I have some tools ordered. When they come, I'll make a tool holder. We'll go right here. And I'm gonna start cutting out some thick plate to mount the bearings that mount the head shaft. That's, uh, that's my next thing. We'll do that next video probably. And I've been trying to buy a used drill press to make the tail stock out of. But I haven't had any luck having people respond to me on Facebook Marketplace. But anyway, I went through a couple of low days when nothing was working out. But right now, everything's lovely.